You've probably seen a switch everywhere. I mean, switch on, switch off. We kind of use them for anything and everything, whether it be to turn on a light mode or turn on dark mode. Well, in this video, I'm going to show you exactly how to create and design that turn on and turn off switch in Figma. We are physically going to work in not only creating it, but also working with the prototype. Now, I have to say that this video is part of a larger video where I show you exactly how to implement light mode and dark mode in a mobile app. And that video is part of a bigger video where I show you how to physically design a mobile app. Now, all of those links are in the description below. You can have a look at them. By the way, I've also added a card at the top of those specific videos. Now, with that said, one thing though, drop in the comments below if you've ever created a switch and if you've created a switch in a different way that I'm gonna show you right now. So with that said, make sure to smash that like and subscribe button. I do post videos like this on a daily, weekly and monthly basis. And with that, let's jump into it. Let me show you how to create that on and off switch. Welcome to chapter three. Chapter three, we are creating that beautiful switch for our light or dark mode. So something very similar to what I created in the wireframe. And essentially the whole idea is when we click on it, it needs to move to the right. And it also needs to do a couple of things in the back end with our local variables. So let's go and create this checkbox. Now, the first thing we want to do is take a frame and we're just going to drag it onto the artboard. And there's a specific reason why I'm doing it this way, but I'm going to take this frame and we're just going to drop it right here for now and rename this. And I'm going to call it checkbox and switch because it's technically a switch. It's not a checkbox. All right. So with that done, I am going to go back to this one because I really like the width and height that I did here, but I'm also going to show you how to do this from scratch. So the width and height that we have, we have 47 and 25. Our icon or our little circular dot in the middle is 19 by 19. You'll also notice that I used an auto layout for this. So let's go and recreate this. First thing first, we are going to take the circular or the ellipse tool. I'm going to drop it in and we are going to change this to 19 for now. With that, we are going to group it. With that group, we're going to say auto layout. I'm going to rename this group. We're going to call it switch. Perfect. And now we can start adding that padding. So just a couple of things. I do want to double check. We did use 19. And when we look at the auto layout, we are using 33 and a fixed of 47. So let's go and change that and set that. So first things first, we can change this hug to fix, change that to 47. And let's just activate a full. And the full that I want to use is light. One thing as well is I want to add three and three. There we go. Now it kind of looks like a switch. The next step is we do want to change our border radius to 500. The reason I'm using 500 is because that will literally make it a pull shape. Exactly what we have there. Okay, so that looks good. One thing though, is we do want to change this to our white variable and let's see how this looks like in the demo as well. So I'm just going to move my arrows until I can get to it. There it is. It looks okay. Actually, one thing I do want to do is change this light. We can use the same color as the checkbox color, which we basically put together in the local variables. We'll just give that extra little darkness that we might need. Okay. So again, going for a very simplistic kind of flat UI design here. Now that we've done this, we are essentially going to create the functionality so that I can move left to right when clicking on it. Because when I look at it now, it doesn't do anything when you click on it. So it's not great. So we want to definitely go and create that functionality. So to do that, what we're going to do is we're going to right click and we are going to create a component of this. And you'll see that it changed it to a purple color, which means that it is a component now. Now that it's a component, when we go to assets and we go and have a look at the assets, you're gonna see that we have the switch there, which is good. Going back to it, now we gotta create that variation. So to create the variation at properties, we are gonna click the little plus and we're gonna create a variation. 
And when you do that, we are gonna go and click the little plus to create that extra variation. Now that we've done that, the next step is we want to rename this. So I'm gonna go and change this to switch on here on the right hand side of the screen. And this one, we are, it says multi-edit for variants. Okay, cool. Yeah, that's good. That's a new feature of Figma, by the way. I'm just gonna rename this default. We're gonna call it switch off and perfect. So we have switch off and we have switch on. So with switch on, one thing I do wanna do is I wanna change the alignment so that that button or that little circular thing goes to the right hand side. We want to change this fill. We're gonna change that to primary. And so there we go, we have our off and we have our on but again it's not doing anything at this stage it's just literally showing us off and on so the next steps is we actually need to go and create the prototype kind of effect for this to do anything okay so to do that we're going to click on our switch off in prototype mode and we're just going to hover over it you're going to see a little circle there and it's right there we're going to take that and we're going to drag it to this one and essentially now it's asking us okay do you want this to activate when clicking on it I'm gonna say yes. Basically what it's saying there, it's property ones is gonna to move to switch on, which is good. But one thing I do wanna do is change this instant and I wanna change it to smart animate. And the reason I wanna change it to smart animate is because it kind of gives us cool effect when you do the smart animate. So that's good. Now we wanna do the same for the switch on. So when you click on it again, it needs to go back to the previous state. So we're just gonna drag it over to that one. I'm gonna make sure smart animate is activated. So let's see how this looks like. So to test it, obviously you can't test it here. It's not gonna do anything. But one thing we can do is go to the assets and we can drag this right here. And let's see if it does anything. And there we go. We have our beautiful looking switch. That looks actually really good. I like the animation as well. The animation isn't too slow. It's kind of just a perfect spot. So with that, we can just get rid of this right here. We don't need it. I'm just gonna do a little bit of housekeeping once again. So just making this a little bit smaller, kind of moving this to the beginning here, just kind of moving everything so that overall it's just nice and clean because this design is gonna become quite big. And by the way, I will be posting videos on my YouTube channel, how we are gonna expand this design from just two pages or three pages for that matter right now to quite a significant amount. We're gonna build out an entire flight app from start to finish. So make sure to subscribe because that's definitely gonna benefit you as a designer. Okay, so now that we've created that, we are gonna go and drop it in here. So let's move in right here. We're gonna take this arrow. We're gonna get out of prototype mode because we're still in prototype mode. I'm gonna go into design. Let's go to the layers and let's have a peek here. Now we have our icon or our arrow there. We do have frame 46. So I'm just gonna go ahead and rename this and we'll rename it to item. And now that we've done that, we're gonna go to assets and we're gonna drop this in right here. Once we've dropped it in, I think it is good as it is, but obviously we wanna get rid of that arrow. Okay, let's see how that all looks like. So let's navigate to our design that we just created. Now, one thing though, is I do feel like it's a tiny bit too big. So we do wanna make it a tiny bit smaller. The easiest way to do this is literally just do it right here. So we're gonna take this guy right here and I'm going to select the scale option on the left-hand side. That's in most cases the easiest way to kind of scale something. And where it says width and height, we're just gonna make it a tiny bit smaller. So two about there should be good. Let's see how that looks like. I'm actually gonna go a little bigger, maybe 49. And that looks good. I really like that. And so now we can test it. Now we can see if it's working and it is working. It's working quite nicely. I really like that. Okay, so with that, we just created our switch on and our switch off. So we have that basic functionality right now. We can always play around with it, kind of play around with the width and height just to kind of get it perfect. But at this stage, that looks pretty good. All right, so with the on and off switch done, the next chapter here is I'm gonna show you how to put all of this together. So when you click on that switch, it needs to automatically change everything. So with that coming up, we're gonna program this switch on, switch off button to do what it needs to do.